Hello everybody. Today I decided I wanted to make a video on the topic of eugenics. Eugenics is a very controversial topic. A lot of people get offended when you advocate it. If you have something against it, a lot of people see you as kind of denying something that's inherently good. I am of the belief that eugenics can be a good or bad thing. It depends on how it is being utilized and who is utilizing it. So I wanted to go over some ideas. This uh, video is kind of inspired by a conversation I had with my friend who actually edits my videos. So shout out to you, Simon. And um, I wanted to go into basically some of these points we went over. And I wanted to also make an important distinction between positive and negative eugenics. So when people think of eugenics in the authoritarian and uh, negative sense, by negative, I mean bad sense. Um, they actually think of this form of eugenics in what we would call, quote unquote, negative eugenics, which by negative, they mean eliminatory. And what that means is basically getting rid of people in a lethal way who are, you know, maladapt maladaptive, whether it be they have some form of retardation, some sort of incurable disease. All of those kind of things. That's negative eugenics. Now, I'm of the belief that that form of eugenics is immoral. And uh, there is no justification for it. I think it's immoral because you're taking the life of someone away. That's their life, not anyone else's. Pretty straightforward. However, there is a form of eugenics which I do think is legitimate. And kind of, there's no reason why we shouldn't be engaging in it. Now, before I get into why I think it's fine to engage in this form of eugenics, which is called positive eugenics, I do want to state that I do understand why people might also be in opposition to positive eugenics because they are worried that it will kind of lead to a slippery slope. Now, a lot of things can lead to a slippery slope. Medicine can lead to a slippery slope, and I'd argue that it also has led to a slippery slope with the sort of big pharma and all that but nonetheless medicine still exists to serve a purpose and it serves a very good purpose and it does help obviously there are issues in the medical community there are forms of medication that are produced solely to derive profit off people who take them there are forms of medication that are intentionally addictive such as oxycotin and all these things and the information regarding that medicine was deliberately um, held back from the public. So, of course, these issues are going to happen. But just because some of these issues do happen with medicine and the like doesn't mean we should stop the production of medicine. Doesn't mean we should stop utilizing medicine for sick people and all those things. So, with that consideration, we're going to talk about a form of eugenics which I think is legitimate and moral. And in a way, almost, I would say, necessary. Because I, don't, I feel like if positive eugenics is going to increase the human being in its health and longevity it would be immoral not to engage in it it would be like refusing to give medicine to society when you have the formula to create it in a way so now obviously improving health in others isn't wrong this is the basis for positive eugenics and we just kind of went over that now a lot of religious people may object to the use of any eugenics, and especially negative eugenics, which I would agree with, but also positive eugenics. Now, they would argue that positive eugenics is a form of playing God. Now, they would say it's a form of playing God because you are deciding who can, who cannot breed. Now, I should define, or I should probably go into what positive eugenics entails. Positive eugenics would basically entail the sterilization of people who have maladaptive traits, who have um, certain incurable diseases that can be passed down through reproduction. Um, people with disabilities would not be allowed to reproduce. Obviously, there would also be limits, extreme limits on the mixing of people of different ethnic backgrounds. Now, this would involve no violence, of course. This would be purely through 
legislation that would just not allow these people to breed. And I think that would create a healthier society. Because what happened is with the Industrial Revolution, we've created a system that allows people to sort of bypass all these forms of maladaptivity without, in a way, you know, nor under normal conditions, they would die. But because of industry, because of all these things and the, the improvement of life, we're able to sort of sustain these people with these disabilities so they can remain present genetically, but nonetheless, they still suffer because they still exist with these maladaptive traits and there's no cure at the moment that can fix them but there is a peaceful way of getting rid of it which is basically just not letting them reproduce now again they may argue you're playing god now they would say we're playing god because we're fundamentally altering not human nature necessarily but the telos of human reproductivity if you want to argue or human health is another way of putting it as well now they are true that they are correct it is true that we are um if we were you doing eugenics positive eugenics we would be manipulating the human being or human beings rather teleologically for a desired goal however we do this all the time and they don't seem to have a problem with it they being religious people i am myself religious by the way so this is not a dig on religious people but um we do this with medicine, obviously, which is what I alluded to previously. And we do this also with surgeries. Now, all of these surgeries are manipulating the human body in a way, in an artificial way, that is with the intention to improve the human being. When you get a heart transplant, you are taking a part of something inherent to that human being and manipulating it in order to basically produce a better human being with a functioning heart. If um, the same thing with certain medicines that alt that alter the uh, hormones of individuals, think of things like testosterone replacement therapy. It that drastically improves the uh, feeling in men. It also improves the physicality in men and women, obviously. But usually, men take it, and you see they become more muscular. Their voices deepen, um, and that that can also have an epigenetic effect as well. So that means healthier human beings will have healthier children and vice versa so that being said we, we already engage in multiple forms of eugenic practice just not in this certain way of um restricting reproduction however we do engage in you know manipulating the human being in many ways in order to produce a better human being that is a form of eugenics and Eugenics just means good genetics. We're trying to correct for the bad genetics in a human being when we engage in these uh, sort of um, modif modificatory acts in a human being. Now, on the issue of playing God, it to me, I don't think it is playing God because playing God is not necessarily an action. It's an attitude. To play God would be to be prideful and to think you are somehow better than god no better than god are better than god um and that you know god can't do what you can do that would be playing god and that would therefore be you know sitting in immoral however when we do things like certain surgeries certain kind of um, hormonal therapies anything medical that produces a positive benefit in human beings we wouldn't argue that we are playing god because we're not coming from a prideful sort of standpoint we're coming from a here's an issue that we have and let's try and fix it the same principle applies to positive eugenics here's an issue that we have whether it be you know you name the issue let's try and fix it so no so people do not have to suffer and let's do it in a way that's going to not make people um suffer more than they have to which is why positive eugenics is a thousand times better and much more moral than some sort of draconian negative eugenics now obviously if you had the choice between having a child that is um, maladaptive 
or not, you would, you would rather you would choose a child that is healthy and adaptive to the set of, uh, the, or rather the environment that we inhabit. So it's, it's pretty obvious that you know there is a good and bad set of things that you would not want to have in human beings. Because the reason I bring this up is because a lot of people say that oh disabilities are it's just a form of human biodiversity. And it's just as beautiful to have a disability as it is to not have a disability. And it shouldn't even be called a disability because it's just a different variation of human being. Now, this is kind of a cope. And I understand where it's coming from. Like, obviously, I feel bad for people who have disabilities. Like, if I didn't, I wouldn't be trying to or I wouldn't be advocating a solution to the problem in, in, a, in a positive and peaceful way. Um, I think that. <laughs> it is true that it is biodiverse, but just because something is biodiverse doesn't mean that it is necessarily good. Something can be biodiverse and, you know, be bad. There are various people with cancer. It is bad that they have cancer. That's the introduction of cancer and people who don't have cancer. That distinction between those with cancer and those without, that's a biodiverse distinction. However, you wouldn't argue that because they have cancer that it's a good thing. Actually, if you told someone with cancer that, they'd probably look at you like you're crazy. And rightfully so, because that's a crazy and ludicrous thing to say. So just because there's biodiversity doesn't mean we should a priori accept it as a good thing. It can be a good thing, uh, but it can also be a bad thing. So that's a horrible argument that I've seen come from some people. Now, this also brings us into... Another issue of um, breeding cattle and, and breeding even fruits and vegetables like things like cabbage and broccoli, you know, th these are these are man-made or rather genetically modified by man foods that we eat. Now, and the same thing goes for like horses, tried to create stronger horses and all and all these things and People say, oh, well, we're not vegetables and we're not horses, but this entirely misses the point. It's like, yes, we are not those things, but the purpose of of doing these things to these living beings is to create healthier living beings. And there's no reason why we should, I mean, in many we are animals. We are higher animals. We're superior uh, because we have a spiritual um, intellect. We have a soul and all these things. We still have a biological body that functions biologically like an animal's body does, and so do plants. So there's no reason we shouldn't be trying to improve those things like we do with plants and plants for food, that is, and um, animals, because they too need to be healthy and, and thrive. So there's there's no reason why we shouldn't do that. Like, yes, we are better than horses, but we also share things in common with horses, such as um, having a set of organs, having, um, you know blood in our body, having to breathe in oxygen. You know, it'd be silly to say that if a horse broke its leg and we fix the horse's leg so it could run better, that we shouldn't do it for a human being because we're not horses. Of course we're going to fix a human being's leg that breaks because a human being also needs to run and walk and all these things, just like a horse does. So if we're going to modify horses genetically to make them healthier, then why not do it with humans if we're going to apply the same principle when it comes to other things and horses that we do it with humans? Like, like I just said, fixing a broken leg or whatever. So again, it, it totally misses the point. Now, this also brings us into the issue of transhumanism. Now, I'm of the belief that transhumanism is a bad thing. If by transhumanism, one means the complete annihilation of the human being into an artificial um, entity. Now, this is bad because it's not... You can't even call it something that is um, aiding or supplementing the human. Because in this case, you are completely annihilating the human being by replacing him with machine. That's the problem with, with, with absolute transhumanism. Now, at what point does something become transhumanist is the question. Because if I lose my leg and I get an artificial leg, is that transhumanism? I mean, in a way, it kind of is because I have added something to my body that is not from my body. It doesn't share any components that my body does. It is a foreign object in every sense, but I use it as a tool to improve myself. 
I mean, the, the obviously the earliest manifestations of this, I guess you could say, are like wooden peg legs on a pirate. That's a kind of a primitive form of transhumanism. So, I think that in that sense, I mean, that's absolutely fine, and that's also a good thing. Uh, like, if I lost my legs, I'm I'm not going to want to sit in a wheelchair all day with no legs. I'd rather have fake legs that could let me walk around like a normal human being. It would make there there's no reason not to do it. Furthermore. There would be no reason not to introduce things like certain, uh, I guess, organs that could circulate your blood better or um, chips in your brain and all these kinds of things. However, when it comes to chips in your brains, I think there are issues that could easily happen. Like if this chip is run by a certain company that could obviously be used for propagandistic reasons and all those problems so i do think you know again these technologies in themselves can be very good but the the hands of the people that they're in they don't seem like they're going to be headed in a good direction so i can understand the skepticism and the reluctancy to accept these technologies when they're presented to us like Neuralink or whatever i get that and i would even agree to some extent that we need to be skeptical and be careful with that on a final note here on eugenics, I do want to also state that uh, we we practice um, the form of eugenics all the time in sexual encounters. When a woman doesn't want to have sex with a man who is overweight, smells bad, she's practicing a form of eugenics. She's denying herself to this man who she sees as unhealthy and sick because she doesn't want to have sick and unhealthy offspring. Now, she might not know that consciously, but her body and her senses recognize this and communicate to, to her to stay away from this man. And likewise, if a man sees a woman who is grossly overweight or grossly underweight or has some sort of, you know, some, there's something unsettling about her, maybe in the face, maybe her eyes are sunken in, maybe she has, uh, even, even let's say she's relatively healthy, she's lacking in the her chest or she's lacking in her hips or something like these are all signs of a lack of fertility in a woman that a man is going to be less attracted to because he doesn't see it as a valid and healthy woman to produce offspring with he's attracted to women with curves and lar larger um, accessory body parts because he sees it as a sign of fertility because it, it is firstly and he's going to be more attracted to a woman who has those things for the most part and obviously nobody's going to have a problem if some if a man or a woman rejects someone they find unattractive for these reasons because it's just kind of ingrained into us that it is the case that we should reproduce with healthy people and the reason i'm bringing this up is because the very act of denying yourself to these people sexually is a form of eugenics it's a form of preserving your good genetics and looking for someone else who has good genetics to create a child that has also that also has good genetics so that's um that's a form of eugenics we have accepted throughout all of history and nobody has a problem with that so that's all like everybody does a minor form of eugenics there's no reason to not increase this and do it on a political scale and make it better for everyone because if we don't do eugenics there's also going to be a sort of negative effect on society where the dysgenic people are going to strain the system and its resources and lead to a collapse over time and it's not going to be good for anybody it's not good. and the people with the dysgenics aren't going to be able to solve the problem because they're usually low iq and can't solve these problems so it's it's a whole you know when, when you engage in these kinds of arguments you have to realize that individuals aren't isolated from the rest of the human community and the individual acts of a person and the essence of a person is informed by their being or their essence rather and um that is going to affect the society that's going to affect the person they they commune commune with and their family and that family is going to affect the local community that local community is going to affect other local communities and so on and so forth and that's how these things from a microcosm affect society macrocosmically but hearkening back to transhumanism, there's also another thing that um, regarding eugenics and regarding 
what's it called regarding uh, transhumanist principles and implementation of these technologies. You know, people do make the argument that, well, these can get into the wrong hands, but there's no reason to necessarily think it will. Yes, it can. It definitely can. And it seems like the people who are doing it now or advocating it now, the elites, for sure have the wrong intentions. They obviously want to get rid of white people in their own nations and all that kind of stuff. Um, however, it's, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the case to that it's going to be in the hands of bad people. It could just as easily be in the hands of good people. So that's not even an argument against the principles of eugenics and minor transhumanism at all. It's more so an argument that bad people can take good things and make it and use it for wrong, which is true in every case. So those are my thoughts on the problems of eugenics and transhumanism. Happy New Year, and uh, there's going to be some more videos coming out on elite theory soon and a bunch of other topics too, so stay tuned for that. Thank you.